I've got some projects planned where I need to make some fairly precise bends in metal, so I thought I'd make my own universal bender. So I've got this length of 40 by 10 millimeters mild steel, which should actually make most of it. I'll stick the remaining material back in the pile, because who knows, maybe it'll be useful later. The first part of this build is forging work. So I'm going to set up the forge and anvil. While the forge is heating up, let's show you what I'm actually making. A universal bender is made up of three main components. The static arm, which is the green piece here, that's attached to the workbench. The dynamic arm, which is the pink piece here, that's free to move around. And a set of pins that could be put into any of the holes on either of the arms. The general idea is to put a bar between the pins and then use a dynamic arm to bend the material around the centre pin. So let's get that steel in to heat up. Here I'm making one half of the dynamic arm and using a scrap piece of steel to get the angles right. If I knew what I was doing, I could probably get this done in one heat, but I don't. Here you can see that this is an iterative process, and it's a lot of fine adjustments until it's just right. By the end though, the two pieces look pretty parallel, I'm happy with that. Then it's on to forging the static arm from one long piece. Ooh, look at you bending steel with your bare hands. And remember, always be careful with hot metal. And then it's just a case of straightening it up. Now it's ready to mark up center punch and then drill the holes for the pins. Look at how much the drill table flexes. That's going to come back to bite me. Here's my incredible idea of how to keep the drill holes aligned. Spoilers! It doesn't work. But I'm going to press on to see if I can save it, going up to 12 and then 16 millimeter drill holes. Then it's over to the lathe to start making the pins. I've learnt my lesson from last time we used a lathe, and this time I'm cutting the shank before the head of the pin. After drilling all the holes out to 16mm, I found that it wasn't usable, so it was on to plan B. 
I used the leftovers to cut two more arms, which I welded together and took over to the hack space to drill out, because their drill is a lot more sturdy than mine. did the same thing with the two dynamic arm parts, and then used the pins to align them when welding them together. I cut off the one useful part of the static arm that I'd made so far, and welded on the new arm. That's the main part of it done, but there's a few extras I want to add to make it more useful. The first of these is some small standoffs to help raise up dies and follow blocks that are used. The other is a die for large radius bends. I didn't have any steel stock big enough, so I'm trying my luck with wood. I added a steel centre to hopefully be a bit more robust. Remember how my drill's a bit wonky? That's more cutting and gluing to do. Finally, it needs some follow blocks to actually do the bending. I managed to find this huge lump of steel at the scrapyard, but it took forever to cut on the bouncer. And guess what? This also took two attempts to make, so I kind of gave up with filming at this point. finally done. What was meant to be a really easy project took far longer than it should have done. But now I have the bender that I actually needed in the first place. I swear I spend more time making tools than actually making stuff, but hopefully this one will prove its worth.